Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are embracing a step, sequencer. During the previous video, we talked about the details and how it functions. Now, we are taking it to the next level by introducing a simple arrangement. Our focus of the day is to create a layer of piano sound and also a string quartet that could be very simply substituted by the guitar riff. Let's get started. Next bar. Second bar. You understand? Third bar. Tap, 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 tap. Four bar. Oh, beautiful. So we are talking about one note, playing that rhythmic structure. Now change path selection. Excellent. So now... I can always polish it. Moving forward, pat. This tension 11 in C minor 7 will be golden opportunity. Bar 2, bar 1, bar 3, and bar 4. Let's try it. You see, I add this note. See, we add, oh, excuse me, we add, we add the flat three into C minor seven, and all of a sudden this pattern uh, becomes more interesting, more grounded in C minor seven. Like this, bar one. Mm. Let's see. Ah, 
Aha. Second bar. Hmm. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da. Second. It will follow. And of course, this one. This note in the this pattern looks magnificent. Let's hear it again. Let's unleash the drum set. sequencer allows us to experiment experiment with our own sound and uh, a new fresh perspective the usual playing has been substituted by this sequence thing what sequence notes for us there is a 16 uh, sequence notes per measure what can be manipulated sometimes less sometimes more it's up to your imagination every single parameter of that sound you create can be bended and twisted into your liking so i'm measuring the harmony movement from that step sequencer perspective which is a brand new a totally new uh, approach which i i never had a chance to experience so instead of going after my usual thought process i step out of my comfort zone and experiment and this experiment the science project is the step sequencer you cannot predict what's come out of it but you can control it so you move stuff around you hear stuff and then you make decisions which way to go in the end of the day you create something fresh something new and you embrace that technology into your music production all right we could do exactly the same thing towards the bass line but this time to create a little bit of contrast we're going to play it play bass line on the piano record plays from the start here we go and... Excellent.
strings. Under strings, let's generate studio strings from MPCX. Okay, I go to step sequencer, pad scene, so I'm gonna select a note I wanna fool around with. Let's do the go to the bar one. It's like a, a reef on a guitar. If you don't hear it, we are going to uh, mute some of these tracks, like uh, mute bass, mute drum set, and pad scene. Oh, pad can stay. Okay. <laughs> All right. So bar. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We are going after a strings. Here we go. So this is the the first pattern. Pop, pop, pop. This one is unnecessary. I can repeat the same thing in a bar too. Pop, 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 pop. Yes. I can always increase the volume, you know, of, of them all, no problem. This one. Uh... Here we go. Doesn't do much right now. So let's just uh, let's, let's start building it sooner. Here we go. So it starts shaping in a beautiful way. Now, when we add additional instruments, uh, let's just unmute uh, bass.
see how strings breathe? The ba ba, ba da da, ba da da. Right? And there's dynamics in place. And then not only dynamics, but the placement uh, of those notes kind of uh, fools around with uh, uh, other instruments. The bass line, w uh, listen to the bass line and the strings. So now I'm gonna mute the piano. I'm afraid that I would never come up with uh, this kind of rhythmic patterns on the piano just by grooving with the band. I could come up with something, um, something totally different. You know, like... Mm. So I could come up with my own um, picadols, what I basically I use on a daily basis, but I would never come up with these kind of relationships because they... they they happened organically and we kind of capture that essence. It's like, I like it, I change it. I like it, I change it. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, so you kind of, you follow that, that, um, that pathway and eventually you just end up with something like this. Okay, let's unleash all the instruments, no mutes. <laughs> Part mute goes into each sequence individually and mutes certain tracks. I want to mute the bass, I want to mute the drum set, I want to mute the piano. And then you kind of listen the impact, what it does into your music. Sequence after sequence after sequence, and you can build upon your arrangement that way. It's a totally new perspective and new way of seeing your music. And at the same time, it's a wonderful opportunity to experiment with what else is possible. We go to sequence, we hit the pencil, and say, copy sequence, copy sequence, copy sequence. Next song, we've got all the sequences presented. What's lovely about that thing is that I can go to sequence one, track mute, and basically change it. So I could use the, the first one in the first uh, sequence, a piano and bass relationship. You see what I mean? So now with the second, let's add the strings. Beautiful. So we presented it very well. Now, during the third sequence, let's just do bass, piano strings and paths. So it's always, you know, like the composition kind of grows upon us. Now the drum set, of course, fourth. And um, let's just use the, the third one as a bass a pad. And piano. Okay? Menu. Next song. Here we go.
beautiful. We can only always duplicate another sequence, another sequence, and then, you know, go to next sequence, boom, track mute, and the sequence number six, five, six, everything plays, and on seven, let's just use just the piano. That's it. The beautiful thing about next sequence is that we can manipulate the inside of the music as long as you want and come up with different variation solutions, right? A mixture of layers. Just remember, as a music composer, you want to make sure that every layer is interesting. Not, ev not f only for you, but also the instrumentalist who is about to play it. You understand? You don't want to uh, exhaust one of your players with some boring stuff. No one will get excited about it. Inter piano player falls around with the bass. It's only one note, but you play with the rhythmic structure. That's it. Step sequencer, it's a wonderful device. It allows us to go beyond our usual and experiment with the music, with the rhythmic structure, with rhythmic patterns. The possibilities are endless. It's just up to our imagination. What instrument we are going to generate through that sequencer and uh, what kind of results we will basically end up creating.